Hi, I'm Doug, and I'm going to be showing you how to make an isometric render of a Minecraft map in a void. We're going to go into the voxel editor, and if you want to use only the editor in a void, then you go to settings, system, you can select voxel editor as the startup menu, in which case it goes straight to here. I'm not going to use the edit tool for this, and I'm going to close the help. I'm now going to import a Minecraft map. And I put some of these into my Minecraft Maps directory here. Uh, you can open them from wherever you want. And I've downloaded Greenfield City from Planet Minecraft. So if I open this, so once the Minecraft map has been imported, you'll have the materials window open. We can close that down as we won't be using it today. And you'll be looking down. If I right click with the mouse, I can then move around the scene and take a view. If I go into my settings graphics, you can see here I've got different options for the graphics quality, defaults to medium. For a lower end PC, you may want to go to very low. And for my PC, I can select very high. And if you want to check the performance is satisfactory, you can show performance. So I'm going to uncheck that for the moment. And in order to make a render, I'm going to want to take an isometric camera. So here I'm going to select camera and I'm going to go into the Arcball camera, use Arcball camera there. Although I could right click and select Arcball camera by default with the right click quick menu. Now I'm going to use an orthographic projection. This is because an isometric camera is a specific kind of orthographic projection and I can rotate around. This is uh, looking straight down one axis. And here we have uh, the isometric view, which is 45 degrees. And I can go down to where we're looking straight on the side of the map. And then I'll look up and here we're at uh, the 35.26, etc., which is our isometric angle. You'll notice that the bottom here of the map, we're looking into the underground. Now this is because the distance we are from the scene is such that we're clipping into the lower layer. Now to get rid of that, we're going to adjust the distance to the center. So I can double click into here and I can set myself at being a thousand voxels away. Alternatively, I can single click in these menus and drag right and left. The amount of view that you see is controlled by the orthographic width, which is set at the moment to 1024 voxels, which you can again drag to increase. Now you'll see that the scenery has gone slightly blue. This is because there's an atmosphere and the default atmosphere is like in the real world, slightly blue. So I'm going to enter my light and atmosphere settings and I'm going to set this half length, which is the distance to the point at which the atmosphere is uh, going to remove about half of the color to a larger distance. It's set to 10,000 voxels. I'm going to set it to 100,000 voxels now. And we're going to leave this open because we're going to want to alter the light direction and angle. So I'm going to close my camera view because I'm quite happy with this uh, viewpoint. Although we can move ourselves around, I'll just show you that quickly. We can alter the um, center, which is currently set on zero, zero, either by right clicking and going artboard camera center here, or by changing our coordinates. So I can scroll myself up and down and uh, along the X direction to get ourselves the, the best viewpoint. I think I'm going to set my center somewhere near the center of this um, uh, part of the world. So perhaps oh, we'll camera center here, there, and then maybe I'm going to move myself slightly further out so we can see those bridges. Okay. Now for the light and atmosphere, I'm going to want to have the sun coming from an angle at which it's hitting uh, the sides of these buildings and maybe having the shadow angle go off to the right. At the moment the shadow is coming off to the left and because of that we're only illuminating some of these tall building structures here. So to change my light we have the azimuth and the elevation. The elevation is how much up and down the light is from the default y axis um, and the azimuth is how much around it is. So for example if I click in here and drag you can see that we're spinning the light angle around and if I click and drag here, you can see I'm going to make the shadows longer. 
make the shadows shorter. So I'm going to a reasonable shadow length, but not so much that everything goes dark. And I think this angle is perhaps a bit straight on. Um, so I'm going to just rotate a little bit up. There we go. Okay, I think that's reasonable for getting as good brightness on the scene. So I'm going to close the camera, close the light and atmosphere. Okay, this is a, a reasonably decent scene, and I can press Control M. Right, okay, that's looking good to me. Without the menu, I can see the scene in its full. Control M again, and now we're going to go to the render. So I'm going to uh, connect this over to the right hand side. You can actually pull this away from the main view screen um, using the settings display and then if you click on external viewpoints you'll then be able to drag this window outside of the main window however i can't do this here because i'm recording just the avoid window and i'll take that off so that i don't accidentally drag something outside the window where you won't be able to see it so i'll close this down and now for a render we can do a quick preview uh, this is fairly low resolution, but then we can do a denoise, and uh, here we don't see too much, but it can be quite useful to do this when you're looking at different lighting changes. I'm actually going to do a straightforward ray trace now, just by clicking ray trace with the default settings. And this does one pass at four samples per pixel. And those of you who do much rendering will know that you probably need to get about a thousand samples per pixel to get an extremely good render. Um, although using denoising, you can use less. In this case, I find that uh, when you have a large amount of water and transparencies, the denoising works less well. So I'm going to do a simple uh, render with uh, a thousand samples per pixel by simply choosing to increase the number of what I call continuous um, accumulations to 250. So that's 250 times four samples per pixel, which gives me about a thousand samples in total. And then I'm going to click on this continuous button, which will basically accumulate rendering until we hit this 250 uh, accumulations of four samples per pixel. Whilst it's doing that, it will be saving every time we get to 100% on the render I've, because we have auto save on. Every time you click on the main render button, which has now disappeared as we're in the middle of rendering, a new auto save name will be created. So this way you can carry on doing this render uh, overnight, for example, shouldn't hopefully need that for a single image um, and uh, your image will be stored and saved. And if there's any problem, um, if your computer was to shut down, for example, uh, you lose uh, power, then you will preserve the uh, last image that was uh, calculated over this accumulations. Once your ray tracing has finished, you can open up the screenshots directory by clicking on the button here. By default, your image will be saved as a PNG. You can control that with the settings for the system. And here we have the render image format, which is a PNG. You can use JPEG or both PNG and JPEG. For further rendering controls, if you want to do, for example, a 4K, Rather than using the display settings of your current screen size, you can control this by unchecking this and then either selecting from the drop down or by selecting from the custom image size here with both X and Y size. And that's it.